Hey everyone, welcome back to another Saturn Day video. Today we're looking at a table and my hands. And it's because today I wanted to talk about something a little bit different. I wanted to talk about the original launch controller for the Sega Saturn. But before doing that, I wanted to sort of uh, show you the evolution of Sega's controllers up to that particular point in time. So to begin with, the very first controller Sega had developed, at least for the North American Master System, was this, the control pad. You'll notice that there's some slight discoloration here, but this is quite old. And very simple design, it mimicked the NES uh, fairly closely. The big difference being, of course, that on this controller, nowhere do you have a start and select button. The start button was built into button number one. And this D-pad was a little bit unique. I actually kind of like this controller. So that was the original. Let's put this aside. Let's put that down there. Hopefully it doesn't fall. And then from there they moved on to the controller that just about everyone knows and loves and that's the Bean controller, the Boomerang controller, the famous controller, the Sega Genesis controller. You know what, I'm going to move that just slightly out of frame here. So this was the follow-up to the Master System controller, was the famous Sega Genesis controller. Three button layout, they added a start button. Phenomenal D-pad, one of the best actually. And uh, yeah, there you have it. This is a classic controller. It's kind of hard to set this all up here. And then they followed that up with a six button controller that was really necessary for games like Street Fighter 2. And well, here is that bad boy which follows the same design fairly closely except now you have six buttons another phenomenal d-pad and you have this weird button mode button up there and start button there i'm not going to talk too much about this because today we're talking about the sega saturn launch controller but one observation that i have always made and i never really understood why they did it is why are these buttons smaller than those thought it would have been really cool to extend this controller just ever so slightly and have these buttons the same and the reason why I mention this is because it's going to come up again let's put this one down here so there's the evolution of Sega's controllers up to that particular point in time but now we're going to have one here and that is this time I put the cables around properly the Sega Saturn controller and here it is. This is a really unique controller. You can see how they took the evolution of this into this design. So let's go ahead and remove all the other controllers because we don't really need those. Today we're going to be taking a look exclusively at the Sega Saturn launch controller. And there were actually three different controllers available for the Saturn, much like the Genesis that had two. Alright, so you can definitely see the influences there from the six button Genesis controller, but let's take a really good close look at this. You'll see that it fits in the hands quite nicely. And in terms of buttons, we have a really unique D-pad. If we look really carefully, you can see the way you see the way it's curved in to actually hold your thumb. That was really unique for its time. We have a nice start button here and then the exact same configuration of A, B, C, X, Y, Z or Z for the buttons. Now again they use the same buttons as the six button Genesis controller so they're not exactly the same and I don't know why they did that. And then up here it doesn't actually say what this is but there's a button here and there's a button here and if we look really carefully at this you'll see that when you push it down it just moves ever so slightly I always hated these was never a fan of these however as a controller it's not bad it's not bad I mean it follows the same overall design as the six button Genesis controller except of course like I say for the addition of these two L and R buttons but they were really poorly executed. They, I mean, you can hear it. 
They just don't, they don't do a good job. They don't feel good as you press them. But for fighting games, this is, is not bad. It's not bad. The next iteration of this controller would probably be the best one. But we'll take a look at that at another day. For now, this is just a very quick look at the Sega Saturn launch controller. And you can see how they took what, you know, they had designed for the Sega Genesis and sort of evolved it. I like the contours on the back here. Makes it very comfortable to hold the controller. But you will also notice something uh, that's lacking or missing, and that is an analog control stick. There is no analog here. So we've gone from Sega Genesis all the way through to Sega Saturn now without a analog control uh, stick. And that's a problem because many of the games on the Sega Saturn, even at launch, were 3D. But they would fix that in a future controller iteration, which I'll talk about at a later date. So that's it. That is the Model 1 Sega Saturn controller. And we'll take a look at the next ones in a future video. I just wanted to break up the reviews with something a little bit different. So I hope you guys enjoyed taking a look at the Sega Saturn launch controller. And I'll return to regular video game reviews next week. Alright guys, until we meet again in the next video.